children welcome back to our new session of mathematics with the chapter number 16 in the previous part we have started with exercise 1.5 let us continue with the same exercise in question number 5 so let us start with the question number 5 in that we the question is what they ask you to rationalize the denominator the question is rationalize the denominator let us see how to solve so first of all we will see what is the meaning of a question rationalize the denominator means here in the questions they will, they will give you the sum where your denominator is sorry uh, denominator is given as a irrational number can you see here for the first sum yes it is given as 1 by root 7 denominator is root 7 correct we want to make the denominator as a rational number how to solve this sum let us start now here as the denominator is root 7 i will multiply numerator and denominator by same denominator why by only the same you know why can't we take the another one yes you i will give you the answer for that because if i take root 7 into root 7 it will become as root 7 square and if you take a square root and square it you will get the same number so that your denominator will become as rational number in this case if your numerator will become as irrational it's okay we will not concentrate on numerator over here the main part is what denominator therefore here we will multiply numerator and denominator by root 7 upon root 7 so 1 into root 7 is root 7 root 7 into root 7 is root 7 square which is equal to root 7 upon 7 so this is nothing but your final answer let us see the second sum the second one is little bit different what is that 1 upon root 7 minus root 6 can you see over here children look at over here it is root 7 minus root 6 with the plus or minus sign so you can't multiply numerator and denominator by root 7 or root 6 or with the same for that we have to multiply by conjugate so this is a new word for you what is a conjugate of the denominator conjugate means if these two are numbers whatever the sign is given minus just take the opposite sign and write the term that means root 7 minus root 6 the conjugate will become as root 7 plus root 6 so conjugate of root 7 minus root 6 is root 7 plus root 6 so we will take the same term multiply but only with the different sign so we will multiply numerator and denominator by root 7 upon root 7 plus root 6 upon root 7 plus root 6 so what will be the numerator then 1 into root 7 plus root 6 will remain as it is root 7 plus root 6 now concentrate on denominator it is in which form can you see in any any identity form yes this is a minus b into a plus b so all of you know the formula a minus b into a plus b is what a square minus b square so it will become root 7 square minus root 6 square numerator keep it as it is root 7 plus root 6 but root 7 square will become as 7 and root 6 square will become as 6 correct so 7 minus 6 will become as 1 so if you want to remove this one your final answer will be root 7 plus root 6 with the denominator 1 that means it is a rational number as a denominator hope you all of you understood this type of questions yes so we will solve more sums to understand now this is also again a similar type of sum what is the question 1 upon root 5 plus root 2 now all of you understood the concept of conjugate so what will be the conjugate of root 5 plus root 2 correct so it will be root 5 the number will remain as it is only we will change change the sign so it will become root 5 minus root 2 will be the conjugate and we will multiply numerator and denominator by conjugate so 1 upon root 5 plus root 2 into here root 5 minus root 2 upon root 5 minus root 
so the numerator if you are multiplying by 1 so it will become root 5 minus root 2 again a plus b a minus b the terms are same with the opposite sign so we can apply the identity formula as a plus b into a minus b as a square minus b square therefore it will be root 5 square minus root 2 square so what is a root 5 square value root 5 square value is 5 yes similarly root 2 square is nothing but 2 correct if you take a square root and square it that number will remain as it is therefore 5 minus 2 will become as 3 with the numerator root 5 minus root 2 so what is your final answer in this case root 5 minus root 2 upon 3 see the next one 1 upon root 7 minus 2 1 upon root 7 minus can you see the slight difference in this here in the denominator one is irrational and second is rational but we will consider as a whole term which is not the whole number which is nothing but an irrational number only so we will take the conjugate of that and we will solve it in the same method so root 7 minus 2 the conjugate will become as root 7 plus 2 so multiply numerator and denominator by root 7 plus 2 so again 1 into root 7 plus 2 is root 7 plus 2 apply again a minus b a plus b as a square minus b square so root 7 square minus 2 square hope till here it is clear because the last three sums are nothing but same only same method with the same formula we are solving okay so root 7 plus root 2 here just a printing mistake is there please here i will just make the changes over here can you see over here yes children here a small printing mistake is there i will recorrect it over here it should be 2 over here so root 7 plus 2 upon 7 minus 4 so your final answer is nothing but root 7 plus 2 upon 3 continue with the next part that is we will see about the laws of exponents for real numbers whatever we have learned law of indices for rational numbers integers whole numbers the same formula we have to apply over here as well so let us revise those all the laws first and then we will see the sums related to this so let us revise the first one do you remember what was the first yes this is very very important and you all of you are aware of this all the laws the first one a raised to m into a raised to n is nothing but a raised to m plus n yes for example 5 raised to 2 into 5 raised to 4 is equal to 5 raised to 2 plus 4. Do you remember if the basis are same with the different index and the multiplication is given in that case we have to add the index. So it will become 5 raised to 2 plus 4 which is equal to 5 raised to 6. Is it clear? Do you remember these laws? yes let me see let us see the second one a raised to m divided by a raised to n is equal to a raised to m minus n where m is greater than n yes the same how we have done for multiplication for division if the basis are same and the index are different in that case we have to subtract the index correct so for example 5 raised to 8 divided by 5 raised to 4 is equal to 5 raised to 8 minus 4 which is nothing but we can say here as 5 raised to 4 the next one is a raised to m divided by a raised to n so a raised to m divided by a raised to n is equal to a raised to m n mn means what m into n so 7 raised to 2 for example 7 raised to 2 raised to 3 
so it will become 7 raised to 2 into 3 that is 7 raised to 6 so these are nothing but just a revision for you with all the laws let us continue with the next one the next is a raised to m into b raised to m can you see the difference in the first one and the fourth one what is the difference here the bases are different but the index is same so a raised to m into b raised to m is equal to a b raised to m so a into b raised to m so for example 3 square into 7 square is equal to as the basis are same we can take it both together so 3 into 7 raised to 2 so which is nothing but 21 square or we can say 21 raised to 2 generally whenever the index is given as 2 we will use we will not use the word as raised to 2 we will use it as square yes so fifth one is a raised to m divided by b raised to m same for division Again, the bases are different, but the index is same. So, therefore, a divided by a raised to m divided by b raised to m is equal to a upon b raised to m. Therefore, for example, 3 square divided by 4 square is equal to 3 upon 4 raised to 2 or 3 upon 4 the whole square. And the last one, you all of you are fond of this formula. You like it very much, I know. Because always such a type of sums, you will get the final answer as direct 1. Why? Because a raised to 0 is 1. So, any number raised to 0 is 1. So, it may be rational, it may be irrational, it may be real number. That law will remain as it is. Hope these all the formulas or the laws are clear to all of you yes let us continue the very important point over here this is a new for you till now whatever laws we have seen this is nothing but of the eighth standard now this is a new one yes so what is a, this uh, the formula or a concept look at over here the for, what is given a raised to m upon n see here this is m and n are nothing but the index so index is given in the fraction form first of all understand what is e raised to m upon n m is nothing but your index or we can say as power and here the n the denominator is nothing but as your root are you getting this point means what if it is a square root that means your n will be value is 2. If it is a cube, your m value will be 3. So, if the root as well as a power is given, in that case we can write it in a form of fraction. We will see the example for that so that you will understand better. Now, the simplification of that you can see over here as I told you n is a root value. Therefore, it is written in nth root this is nothing but nth root of a and m is a power therefore it is given as raised to m so nth root of a raised to m or what we can write it as nth root of a in a root value a raised to m both are nothing but same do you remember what i told you before if you take it as square root of a raised to 2 or square root of a square both are nothing but same the same way over here first you take a root and then take a power or first here inside you take a power first and then take a root both are nothing but same so don't get confused in these two concepts okay let us see the example yes the first one is given as 4 raised to 3 by 2. For 4 raised to 3 by 2, 2 is what? It is nothing but your root. So I have just distributed. As you know the law of indices. A raised to m raised to n is what? A raised to m into n. Now it is given as m into n. So 3 by 2 is nothing but 3 into 1 by 2. Is it correct? 
so i will write it in this form now so i will take the 1 by 2 inside the bracket keep the 3 outside so 4 raised to 1 by 2 raised to 3 just i have split this 3 by 2 over here yes is it clear i will repeat once again if you want so 3 by 2 write it as 3 into 1 by 2 therefore 4 raised to here 3 or you can i will take it as first 1 by 2 into raised to 3 it is nothing but same because the multiplication is nothing but 3 by 2 so what is 4 raised to half denominator is 2 that means it is a square root square root of 4 is 2 so 2 raised to 3 to cube value is raised to 3 generally again i will repeat for your kind information i am using somewhere as 3 as raised to power but generally when the uh, 2 is given use a word square if a power is 2 use the word square if the power is 3 use the cube as a word okay so 2 cube is equal to 8 is it clear to all of you yes now see the similarly if i do it in a reverse this is nothing but by using this one yes now we will see about this yes so what we will do the same splitting 3 into 1 by 2 i will split it as take 3 first inside and half outside so what you will get here 4 cube will become as 64 and 64 raised to half so square root of 64 your answer is 8 that means in both the cases you will get the same answer so we will see this similar type of questions from the exercise next time thank you